was a packed weekend of racing all over the world, and we're going to get you caught up here on the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimira. Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm your host, Danielle Teal. The latest issue of the Next Moto Champion Digital Magazine, featuring current Supersport points leader Garrett Gerloff, is now out for your reading pleasure. Catch up on the latest product spotlights, Instagram page, and of course, regular columns from some of the best racers. Download yours for free at nextmotochampion.com. Now for the news, let's start with AMA Pro Flat Track. Congratulations to Kawasaki's Brian Smith for winning his third consecutive mile of 2016 at Springfield over the weekend. After a race-long battle with Jared Meese, Brad Baker, Kenny Colbett Jr., Brian managed to lead 16 of the 25 laps, making this Smith's third consecutive Springfield mile victory, having won both of last year's races at the historic venue. Congrats to Brian. More on flat track front, congrats to Moto America's Hayden Gillum and Jake Lewis for taking first and third at the Springfield TT All-Star Race over the weekend. Jake was just having a little fun before heading to Road America for round five of his series, and he's on this week's show to tell us all about it, so stay tuned. Moving on, MotoGP heads to Catalonia this coming weekend, where we'll look for Rossi to make his comeback after his disastrous weekend at his home track last round. In World Superbike, American Nikki Hayden had a strong weekend, finishing P5 in race one and P6 in race two. And after the king of Donington Park, Tom Sykes, broke records and took double wins over the weekend, he was presented with his 2013 title winning machine as a gift. He now sits in second place overall, and here's a look at your top five after the UK round. American Cameron Bobier made his World Superbike debut over the weekend, and while he made a mistake that cost him race one, he went on to finish race two in 10th place. He says he was not ecstatic with his position, but happy to be in the top 10. American Michael Aquino was in attendance at the CEV Repsol Moto2 race at Aragon over the weekend, but unfortunately was a part of this huge and fiery crash. Do you see him in there? Oh, it's kind of hard, but he's in there. Fortunately, Michael was okay. American Jason Uribe consolidated 10th position overall in the CEV Championship, following a 9th and 11th at Motorland, Aragon as well. And now for Moto America. Round five at Road America is this weekend, and what some may say has been the most exciting season we've seen in years will resume in Wisconsin, where only 26 points separate your top four superbike riders. You can get caught up on the season thus far by checking out the latest Moto America newsletter on nextmotochampion.com. And don't forget to tune in to BN Sports over the weekend for all of your coverage. Woo, feeling caught up yet? Good. We've got more for you, but first let's take a quick commercial break and thank some sponsors. So we've given away a Speedway Motorsports Shelter and last month a set of Bridgestone tires. Now we've got an amazing prize pack from American Cargo for you. All you have to do is sign up for the weekly newsletter at the front page of nextmotochampion.com like tens of thousands of others and the winner could be you just for signing up. So if you haven't done it yet, do so now. And if you already did, then you're already in the running and will hopefully be the winner for June sponsored by American Cargo. Good luck. Let's take another quick commercial break and we get back with this week's product spotlight.
and n Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. And I told Motorcycle, great rates for great rides. Swing in a minute. This week's product spotlight will have you asking the question, why is John wearing his dollar store sunglasses inside this dimly lit studio? The answer to that question is because I'm standing next to the high viz neon green trooper backpack from American Cargo. You or someone you know may have been rear ended while on their motorcycle by a driver who claimed that they never even saw them. The high viz trooper backpack is specifically designed to avoid those types of accidents. The Trooper was designed for, well, anything and everything you can imagine. It's big, it's tough, it's perfect. Of course, it includes the interior and exterior pockets, tie downs and expected fittings and adjustments. There's a special laptop and tablet pocket and it's hydration compatible. Not to mention a place for first aid, a place for goggles and the ability to secure your helmet on the back. The one thing the Trooper is really known for is its butterfly harness. This is the quintessential element in Americans Cargo's approach to comfort and stability. Incorporating multiple fit and fitting adjustments and increasing the surface area, these straps are designed to work around your equipment and the way you move. Your chest, arms, shoulders, and core were carefully considered. The butterfly harness creates the functionality you need for the riding experience you want. There's a couple other features to mention. There's the retroflect material that makes you more visible at night. And I already mentioned that they make it easier to carry your helmet around instead of leaving on your motorcycle with a net that comes right out of this small compartment and attaches these metal D-ring hooks. There's storage specific for your laptop and space allowed for tools that will come in handy when you're out on the road. You know, when OGO started making women's purses and golf bags, I was afraid that we wouldn't have a luggage company for motorcycle riders. Lucky for us, American Cargo stepped in to focus on riders and developing the functionality and look specifically for what we need. Now the Trooper backpack is one of a number of really cool either backpack, hydration packs, or even pieces of luggage uh, from American Cargo. Um, you can pick these up for around $180 to $210. You can find more information on it at AmericanCargoWithAK.com. And that's this week's Product Spotlight. All right, up next, we're happy to have on someone we've been covering for years and who we think epitomizes next moto champion. He had a rough start to the season, but he's ready to get back to the front of the pack. It's Jake Lewis, so don't go away. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made in the USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at woodcraft-cfm.com. Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line, uh, don't have to worry about overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. And Evans Coolant. Coolant. Got to have the best to go fast. K&N Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out, guaranteed. All right, and we're back, and it may be round five for Moto America, but it's only round two for this guy. After an off-season injury, sidelined him for 10 long weeks, but he's back and better than ever. It's Team Hammer's M4 Sport Bike Track Gear.com Suzuki Super Stock 1000 rider. Number 85, Jake Lewis. Jake, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You know, uh, it's been 
been a busy past few weeks for myself and uh, all the big changes that have happened around me and uh, really looking forward to Road America this weekend. Uh, only my second round, but uh, really looking forward to it after a not so good weekend at Virginia. I was able to get some testing in this past week at Talladega and uh, really made a big step forward with the bike and with the team. So uh, excited for racing this weekend. Well, you just covered a whole bunch right there. So let's start from the beginning. You said you've been super busy lately, uh, starting with this past weekend where you won third or finished third place at the TT race. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, uh, after everything that happened with my contract, uh, you know, I kind of took a step back and just realized, you know, I started this for fun and just want to keep it fun. So I uh, actually just built a brand new Suzuki 450 for flat track and uh, saw the Springfield TT was this weekend. So I uh, just wanted to go do that. You know, uh, my dad was really mad that I went and did it just because if I got hurt and something silly happened, uh, it wouldn't be good. But, uh, you know, for myself, I just need to do a lot of riding and uh, racing to get myself back into racing shape. So uh, I felt, felt like it was going to be a good opportunity for me and then I uh, also got to watch the Springfield Mile on Sunday which is really cool and uh, you know it was a fun weekend I would have liked to have been second or first but Hayden rode really good and uh, with I got a bad start and then halfway through I passed into second but then I lost my front brakes and on a TT I mean you can't stop with no front brakes so uh, had a salvage a third place which I was still really happy about you know I haven't raced at the Springfield TT since 2009 so uh, it's been a while since I've been like competitively racing flat track so i was excited to get back up on the podium well unfortunately nothing happened you got a third place uh so that's all good for you so let's move forward how are you feeling most importantly are you back to 100 percent i'm close to 100 percent you know obviously uh i was off the bike for two months so that was a big uh impact to like you know just my training and riding because uh, you can train all you want but racing shape it's pretty tough to race two races in one day. So at Virginia, I struggled a little bit late in the races just because I didn't have enough strength in my shoulder yet. But uh, we've had two weekends off now, I think it is, and I've uh, been able to do a lot of riding in between and actually going to go ride this afternoon too before I head out for Wisconsin in the morning. So uh, I feel like I'll be close to 100% for this weekend, and uh, Wisconsin's not a physical track, so uh, I should be okay hopefully. And you said you're excited for uh, Road America coming up. But let's talk about a few things, uh, the transition in particular, um, starting with the fact that you started the season with the factory Suzuki Superbike team and eventually had to go to the Superstock team. How did that affect you? You said it, it kind of made you stop and rethink about why you're racing in general, but elaborate on how that affected you. Yeah, you know, mainly uh, just I had no say-so in what happened. Uh, Unfortunately, I crashed a motorcycle the first day I got back from uh, two months of training in California, and uh, that's no one's fault but my own. So uh, I was on the sidelines the first three rounds watching, and obviously, you know, they hired Tony Elias, and he was doing a great job. So uh, for the team to build two more complete super bikes, the staff, the time, everything, you know, nothing worked out. But uh, fortunately for me, I signed with Suzuki through the 2017 season. So uh, Obviously, you know, that took a lot of pressure off myself for when I come back and I have a job for next year. So uh, that's the main thing. Uh, but, you know, moving down to Superstock, uh, you know, I was a little bit bummed out about it at first. But obviously, you know, uh, not going to hang my head up on that and just keep moving forward. So uh, Team Hammer's got a lot of great history in the past, you know, bringing up Hawkins, bringing up Spees. And uh, they've had a lot of good riders and uh, have a good crew behind me. So. You know, we're just going to work hard and try to get some super stock 1,000 wins. And Suzuki's coming out with a new 1,000 for next year, which they say is going to be uh, really good. Uh, so, you know, I have faith in Suzuki. That's why I signed with them for next year as well. But for myself, you know, it's just important for me to just keep going to these races and getting back into racing shape. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Moto America, all the races are right at the beginning of the season. And then we have a two-month break. So, uh Got injured at the wrong time, but, uh, you know, just going to do my best. Well, it might be a good opportunity to get uh, back in even better shape than you are now. But let's talk about, uh, you know, your super bike rookie season was a little bit of a struggle. So do you think this of this move as a digression, you know, going backwards? Or is this maybe where you should have started at in the first place on the big bike? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say because, uh, obviously, in 2014, I had a really good 600 year and... Uh, when a factory team and one of the best teams in superbike racing approaches you and wants you to ride for them, I mean, you can't turn that down. So uh, 
I feel like jumping in a super bike, you know, uh, my size and, uh, the way I fit on the bike was obviously really good for super bike, but you know, Cameron, Roger and Josh were really strong that first year and I had a lot to learn, but, uh, throughout winter testing and, uh, off season, I had a really good off season. So I was really looking forward to this year. So, uh, it was a real bummer. I got hurt, but, uh, you know, take it how it is. And now going back down to super stock, there's obviously some really good competition with Heron, Corti, Fong, Nap, Hayden. I mean, there's a lot of fast guys and, uh, I got to be on my game again, and these two weeks off, I feel like, have helped me get back to where I need to be, and I feel like I can battle for the podium and hopefully the race win in Road America. Well, that was going to lead me to my next question. I was going to say, you had a tough VIR round, but where do you think you're going to stack up once you really get back on top of your game? Yeah, obviously, you know, I want to win, and I know I can because uh, I've raced against all of these guys before, and uh feel like I'm just as fast or if not faster than them. So for me, it's just getting myself back into racing shape. You know, at, at Virginia, I hadn't ridden a road race bike since February. So uh, just everything came at me so fast. And the way the schedule lays out for us throughout the weekend, I mean, we get a decent amount of track time, but those guys have already had three races and a test. So for me, jumping in there with a new bike, new team, new crew, I mean, it was just I wouldn't say it was impossible to win, but, uh, you know, it was a tough task. And uh, I would like to have the test I had this past week before Virginia. But uh, I learned a lot at this test this past week. And uh, I feel like I have a good bike set up going into Road America. So uh, hopefully, you know, I can win or if not, be on the podium. Well, talk about the team dynamic then. Um, you just had a test with them. You said it went well. Uh, talk about joining this new team midway through the season or third way through the season and how that's going. Yeah, you know, it's quite a bit different just because uh, coming off a year with Yoshimura, I had two mechanics, a crew chief, electronics guy, a suspension guy. I mean, you know, a factory team, so you got all everything you want. But uh, with M4, you know, it's a great team as well. Uh, but, you know, we'll have one crew chief and one mechanic, and the crew chief does a lot to the bike. And, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a little bit more hectic over there, but uh, I also still have a suspension guy and a great group of people around me that uh, – want to see me see me succeed so uh i feel like in a way it's better for me getting bumped down to the m4 team and uh it make definitely makes me more motivated you know i want to win races and prove people wrong and uh feel like i have a little chip on my shoulder to do good this weekend at road america you know virginia was pretty pretty bad for myself but uh really looking forward to these next two weeks at at two tracks that i like well, it sounds like you have everything you need over there, Jake, to get back on top. We have all the faith in you that you will. You're one of our original NMCers, one of our young guns that we've been thinking is going to be the next Moto Champion for a long time. So now that you're up on the big bike, we know you can do it. Maybe not now, but maybe next season will be your season on the big bike. Jake, we wanted to get you on. We've missed you this season, but we're happy you're back. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, it's been a tough start to the 2016 season, but uh, hopefully I can turn it around this weekend. And, you know, we still have five rounds left. And uh, I feel like I can definitely run up front, so uh, we'll see what I can do here in the future. You can do it, Jake. <laughs> we have faith in you. Thanks for coming on the talk show. We'll be following you uh, through the rest of the season. So number five, 85, Jake Lewis, everybody. We'll talk to you soon, Jake. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
weaving, weaving, criminal act. Oh, that's a huge crowd. Unbelievable. The front brake. That's the front brake. You saw his front brake slammed on. I've been riding my whole life. I train every day. I'm gonna be the best rider I can be. The bike is an extension of myself. It's also gotta be the best. That's why I race with Saddleman seat covers. Each seat cover is handcrafted with the finest materials available. My seat has pleats stitched on the back, which let me know where I'm at on the bike. This is a huge advantage on the track, and my lap times show it. This seat works so well that it's now available to the public. But honestly, it's one of those things you don't want the competition to know about. So don't tell anyone. This just in, Moto America coverage on BN Sports now includes the Asian Pacific. Racing fans in the Asian Pacific can now see Moto America on BN Sports. Look at us constantly making strides. The full press release can be found at nextmotochampion.com. All right, thanks for tuning in to another great episode of Next Moto Champion Talk Show. Track day season is in full swing and NMC supports two excellent organizations. Sport Bike Track Time and N2 Track Days both have something for everyone. These professional organizations have exceptional environments for the newest novice to the track day expert. No matter where you are or what your availability, surely one of these two has something for you. Check them out at sportbiketracktime.com and into td.org and find your perfect track day today. If you don't want to miss anything from Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track, be sure to tune in for more this season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track coverage. And don't forget to join all of the others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and join our newsletter to get all this and more straight to your inbox each Friday. And last but certainly not least, all of us at NMC are avid supporters of our military men and women. We're proud to support Vet Motorsports, a program that empowers veterans through motorsports. If you've never heard of them, check them out at vetmotorsports.org and see where some of your veterans will be engaging in hands-on motorsports activities in a paddock near you. Vet Motorsports, helping to heal vets through motorsports, and for that, we'd like to thank them. That's all for this week, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. is John wearing his dollar store sunglasses in a dimly lit studio? The answer to that question is the... Uh, <laughs> it's sitting right next to me. It's the neon green. Hi, Viz. Ah! <laughs>